I am quite sure, for example, that there were many dinosaurs that ate meat. I'm quite sure that is the case. Yeah. But the proof that a particular dinosaur ate meat is supposed to be the fact that it has sharp teeth. And we all know that there are many animals today that have sharp teeth that do not eat meat. And besides which, we also know from God's word that no animal ate meat originally. They were all designed to eat plants originally. Okay. So while we're quite happy to suggest that, uh, like many animals today, there could have been dinosaurs that ate meat, this, these things cannot necessarily be found from simply examining the bones. There is no magic formula. When you look at bones, you can't crack a bone open and find a message inside saying, this ate meat, uh, any more than you can find a message inside saying, this was 65 million years old. You know, the, right. the messages are not there printed in the bones. In fact, the messages that we often find, and of course these have to be interpreted as well, but you crack the bones open and instead of finding that tag telling us what it did, you find soft tissue, still pliable blood vessels. Oh yes, and that's a huge one, isn't it? Doesn't that really question the entire uh, idea that these dinosaurs went extinct 66 million years ago if we can still find pliable tissue? And yet, what is their excuse? Well, they say, this can only mean two things. Either what we've been telling people about the age of dinosaurs 66 plus million years ago has been wrong all of these years, our soft tissue must be able to survive for 66 million years. And that, of course, is the latter that they're searching for. They're trying to find a sort of what I call a pickling mechanism, uh, something that must have preserved it, like uh, Swedish pickled herrings or something that preserved them over a long period of time. But, yeah, it's, it's a good example of where they, they will actually quietly sort of push that on one side, really, because it's a bit inconvenient to talk about. Mm -hmm. And yet other things they're quite happy to make comments on. Let's look at a few other examples of how these ideas are sort of twisted and it appears very appealing to believe this. There's a fascinating exhibit in London's Natural History Museum uh, where you see um, a dinosaur called a Tenontosaurus and the display shows it being attacked by four smaller dinosaurs uh, called Deinonychus. Yes. And the caption that goes with it says, uh, did Deinonychus hunt in packs. Did it hunt in packs? Well, we don't know. Right. But their evidence for this is that there was one place where they found five fossils together, one Tenontosaurus and four Deinonychuses. <laughs> so they claim that from that, that's evidence that they hunted in packs. So the Deinonychuses hunted the Tenontosaurus, found it and killed it. And then presumably all suddenly immediately fell over backwards and dropped dead and got fossilised. <laughs> Because, you see, you can't have it both ways. No. They claim that fossils don't form fast, and yet there, the only way their story makes sense is if they were fossilised fast. A rapid burial, rapid fossilisation. Yes. Which is, you know, and this is not an isolated example. This is not in the same museum. They have a, a dinosaur called a centrosaurus, and they claim, the reason why it's called centrosaurus, which means circular lizard, is because they say the herds of them are in a circle because there was one place where they found a number of fossils in a circle. So that herd obviously dropped dead altogether and got fossilised immediately. These are stories, you see, because it's got nothing to do with reality. Right. So we can't determine the actual, the truth from looking at fossils. We can't no. go back in the past and see how they lived their lives. We see the, the clues. We even see ichnofossils. We find their footprints. We find sometimes digested stomach contents. Yes. We find the bones so well preserved that sometimes they have yes. soft tissue. So there's a number of things that can be inferred. Correct. But it's all inference. It's all interpretation. It is. And yet there's some of the evidence that we have where you can actually say something about the behaviors are precisely are the ones that they want to uh, omit. For example, the idea of dinosaur footprints fossilised, where the dinosaurs were clearly on tiptoe, looking like they were running while actually partially submerged in water. Wow. And we would say that was probably because of the floodwaters coming in, they're running to try and escape it, and... Um, you know, and then presumably then they're, they're going to get drowned and fossilised later. You can infer a little bit from the actual fossils there, and yet that's something they don't want to talk about because that doesn't fit their story. Well, you know, what's interesting is oftentimes we see these dinosaur footprints, and I've had the privilege of hand-casting some of mm. these um, Acrocanthosaurus prints yes. and other dinosaurs. We find their, their footprints, and in the layers just above, many times we find the fossils of the dinosaurs themselves. 
but these are supposedly separated by millions of years. So yes. what happened? Did they leave their prints? And then for millions of years, all of a sudden, then they get buried in the fossil record? Yeah, that's right. These things are all to do with uh, their use of language because it's not science. And, and these are stories that are made up. What you need to be looking for is the words and language constructions where they're deliberately casting doubt, they're hedging their bets. The words which are magic words and also words where they're directly putting bias in. 